Mr. Kaplan, nice to have you here at the GDI. We are uh, here in 2017, something is ending in the world and something is beginning in the world. We don't know exactly what it is, what will begin and what will end. What do you think? I believe that Donald Trump will be America's first digital age president. Uh, American democracy thrived. It did very well in a print and typewriter era. And the digital age is still very new. We have had presidents over the last 20 years still living in the print and typewriter era in the sense that they read books. Uh, they, uh, um, you know, they respected a certain, uh, a certain kind of decorum. Uh, they were consistent. This all came from, uh, from the same culture, th that era that started with Gutenberg's Bible, I would say. Trump is really a harbinger of, 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 of something new in this respect. He communicates by Twitter. He doesn't read books, which means he is post-literate. He's made an end run around literacy. Uh, he doesn't follow the policy debate. He just, he just respects people who make money, who are sports heroes. Um, American democracy thrived. It did very well in a print and typewriter era of the long 19th century and 20th century. It is unclear that American democracy can survive and prosper in a digital era. So, as you said, he is a digital president or president of a digital era, era but maybe not of a digital democracy. Do you see any way how we get to a digital democracy or shouldn't we try to get there? Well, democracies throughout history, whether in ancient Greece, in 19th century parliamentary Europe, or 20th century America and elsewhere, um, basically involved citizenry being informed of issues through reading. And reading means going comprehensively to some extent into a subject. It also means essentially giving away power to an elite that governs, which you can change every two or four years, but in between that space, the elite makes decisions. Um, the digital age means not reading comprehensively. It means distractions. It, it means constantly, go, it, it, means, it means juxtapositions. Uh, nothing is linked to anything else. We see this incoherence among, you know, in social media all the time. And it means that people can register their feelings, not every two or four years, but on an hourly basis. So when you say digital democracy, I'm not sure the two words will go together well. We just don't know at this point. We're in a very early stage of it. So will the United States be the theater where this plays out? Will they be the forefront of the question, will digital age and democracy go together? The United States will be the principal theater where it plays out, but it's going to play out, I think, in democracies and election cycles everywhere. Um, you know, where, where, what we saw in Britain with the Brexit vote, in Colombia with the failed peace plan vote the first time, the elections in Poland, uh, the polls as they are now in France and Germany for their upcoming elections, um, it's unclear that a digital age will continue to elect moderate leadership. Uh, it, 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 it's unclear. I think that this new wave of populism and, and the digital age actually go together in some way, though we're just beginning to, uh, to study it. It's not an accident that both of these things have, co have come full-fledged to the fore. So that means we are heading for more of the same, more of the same we have seen in the last months, in the next, well, months, years. Yes, I think when you're dealing with Donald Trump, with any politician, but particularly with him, forget about political science and read Shakespeare. I mean, because th that's what, you know, you're dealing with the mystery of a turbulent personality. And uh, what we've seen of him is generally, so he's very compulsive, 
He, he's very needy in the sense that he's narcissistic. Uh, we've seen this already for a year and a half. I don't think it's going to change in, inside the White House. Now, it's true. He has appointed some very respectable people to the Defense Department, to the State Department, and to other places. So the administration will, could, could be good. It could be a mixture. But in terms of inside the White House, you're going to see a very turbulent very different kind of, um, uh, of atmosphere than we've had before. I would like to be ending with um, your helpful uh, advice, please read Shakespeare. But at least uh, this one question I would like to, to ask, don't we have to read Clausewitz? Don't we have to read Sun Tzu? Will we get into some place where it's not theater, but it's a military theater where we are heading to? That is an excellent point. Obviously, I was just talking about politics. And as someone who's written books on the military, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I would add, I would th add this, that uh, defense departments, uh, military scientific bases, bases, in not only in the United States, but in Russia and China, are now experimenting and, de and beginning to develop a new um, generation of weaponry that operates just beneath the tactical nuclear weapons. In other words, nuclear weapons are politically forbidden. So what they're trying to do is find weapons almost as lethal, but which cannot be categorized as weapons of mass destruction. What this means is war in the future, and we've seen war in every century of humanity. Most people think of a, a, a great power war with the United States and China or the United States and Russia. Um, I'm skeptical of that because I'm more impressed with Chinese and Russian weakness than with Chinese and Russian state. Uh, strength. I think the state structures in, in Russia and China could weaken uh, significantly in coming decades. Uh, and also, what th this doesn't take into account the enormous tension between Russia and China themselves. So I, I'm not convinced it'll be a, 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 a great power war between those three countries.